everyone, in this video, we're going to be going over how you can set up custom reports in EasyOffice. So to find custom reports, we have to go into the more button or this can vary based on whatever your company setup is and go to the reports module. In reports, we have this button on the top right, which says create custom report. So all we have to do is click on this button. The first step in creating a custom report is selecting which module you want to create a custom report for. We offer a huge variety of modules that can make a custom report. And as you can see, I can't reasonably demonstrate all of them in this video. So I'm just going to be going over one example and then um, you guys can play around and let us know what, what your thoughts are and how we can improve custom reports. But for this video, let's say we want to group all of the actions that were taken on asset stock line items. So for clarification, asset stock is a type of item. The line items are the different instances in which you are checking out stock. So an asset stock can be called a charger, but if you check out five asset stock to someone, that quantity of five will be seen as a line item. Or if you add a quantity of 10 to your system, that quantity is also a line item of, add, of adding stock. So with that, let's select the line item sub module. As you can see, some of the related modules were grayed out, which means that they cannot be associated alongside the selected module. So you need to be careful of that. Next, we will select the columns you want to include in the report. So over here, you can see we have a lot of data points that we can include in the report. Um, so let's go and in the and within the same available columns, we have a subsection for the line items. So for line items, let's go for quantity and action. And this is going to show us the quantity of items that had some sort of action associated to them. And the action is going to tell us what that action was. So once we're done with that, we can apply filters to the report. So let's say we only want to see asset stock from a particular group. So for now, let's just say it's not null. So it has the item has a group. And let's say we also want that the asset stock name contains the letter A. We have added another filter. Um, since we have these filters, we also have the ability to apply advanced filters on this. On a basic level, we can change this AND filter to an OR filter, which means if either one of these conditions is true, show, like, show us that particular row. We can also add more filters and um, go into the advanced view. And this will allow us to either edit whatever um, criteria we have, or we can nest settings within settings, as you can see over here. So what this entails is that either the asset stock group is not null, or asset stock name contains A, and the asset stock product no model number is not null. So this is really advanced and really flexible. You can set it up based on whatever your particular filtering requirements are, this was just to call out the ability to filter in such a way. So let's say this is the filter we want. We can also edit this from here. So you can write this like and or and change it up. And when you save it, it's going to re it's going to just mix up that logic for you. So next we can group rows um, and grouping rows basically means as in Excel, you can merge rows together and see the total quantities associated with each row. So let's say we want to group by the action. One important thing to note here is that you can only group rows by columns that you've selected in the second step. So do keep that in mind. Next, we can apply functions. So we have a lot of functions such as, again, we can only apply the functions on the columns that we've already selected. We have uh, the functions of count, sum, average, min, max. This would be really useful in financial reporting. If you're looking to find the quantities of some items or you're looking to find the dollar value of your services, um, this is these are the functions to apply. For now, we're not going to apply any. And then lastly, we're going to click on run report and let's see what we get. So here we've gotten a report with 73 records and it's grouped by grouped all of the asset stock by the action. So this is showing us all of the asset stock which had transfer stock performed on them, custody transfer performed on them, checkout, and and so forth. Since we've grouped these, we can also apply graphs. So we can create graphs from this report. So let's say we want to create a graph. All right, so now we're here and we see a graph. And this graph is telling us that the most common action we took was add stock. 
then we had transfer stock, custody transfer, and so forth. Um, you can change the title of your graph and make it whatever you want to call it. And it's going to reflect on top of the name once you preview it. The primary metric is the metric that you grouped in step number four. And that's going to be the metric that's available in the graphs as well. Uh, the legend is basically just this reference point of what each color in the graph means. You can test out the different types of graphs to see how they look. Uh, for the graphs that are on axes, you can change the names of the x and y axes as well as the values based on what you want to um, measure by. So let's so over here it's uh, putting the y axis as the asset stock number. In the y axis you can see all of the columns that had some numerical value that you can tally up against. So graphs and custom reports is pretty cool feature and it adds the additional ability of visualizing whatever you created in your graph. So if you want to save um, your report or schedule your report, we have these two additional options. So if you save your report, you can give it a name, right? And you can also choose to have this available to all of the admins in your system, right? So now that you've saved it, you can also schedule it. And scheduling it would entail that you can set up a schedule for line items. And this is going to email that particular alert to all of the users that you specify over here. You can choose to create a pattern for when that alert's going to be run. And of course, the data is going to get updated as more actions are taken in the system. Again, you have an, another opportunity to edit your columns or graphs or metrics from here. So um, we don't seem to need that. So let's simply just schedule the report. And now that we've scheduled it, we can get this report every week in our email as well as in the report section. And that's pretty much it on custom reports and graphs in custom reports. Thank you.